let us continue. We discuss the uh, structure of the laminar uh, non premix flame and uh, the idea of mixture fraction and the idea of scalar dissipation rate that follows from mixture fraction. Now, let us uh, extend this idea to turbulence non, turbulent non premix flames and this we have uh, already discussed uh, for uh, in the, the relationship between the non dimensional height of a non premix flame as a function of Reynolds number. We saw yesterday that simple scaling analysis indicates that the h by d will linearly increase with Reynolds number till the flame becomes turbulent and then the flame height goes down a little bit and then settles down at a constant height. I okay. will uh, show you now a video of this phenomena. where you can observe the linear increase in uh, height with increase in Reynolds number. Now, you see that the tip is becoming unstable, the, you know, the flame has lifted off and become turbulent, now, more or less the entire length of the flame is turbulent now. The base is bluish and it is because it is lifted off, there is some premixing that is happening till the point of ignition and the flame stabilizes at a point where the turbulent flame speed is matched by the local velocity. And now, we will also see blow off of this flame. I will play it one more time, yeah, it is already playing. You must have seen that it is the tip that becomes turbulent first and then the disturbances propagate to the base and when the disturbance propagates to the base, flame lifts off and you have lifted flame for a range of Reynolds numbers and then it blows off. Yeah. At the time of blow off, uh, there is no uh, uh, location that is available for the flame to stabilized because there is no point where the local velocity is matched by the turbulent flame speed. See because the flame is lifted, lifted off, there is a region where there is no reaction happening, only mixing is happening. So, a premix mixture is created, the flow is turbulent and by increasing the Reynolds number, you are continuing to increase the, uh, the uh, by increasing the Reynolds number, you are continuing to increase the turbulent flame speed. Okay. So, there will come a point at which there is no point where the flame can stabilize and blows off. Yeah. I, I am not sure, I would guess that it is uh, 10 millimeters, what is the diameter of the tube? 10 millimeters, right? Yeah, 10 millimeters. Okay. So, the simple result that we derived from a scaling analysis is confirmed by experiments. Yeah. So, now the diffusion flame can go through a series of transitions, one is it remains laminar, the height goes up, the tip becomes turbulent, the entire flame becomes turbulent and then it lifts off and then blows off. Till the point it lifts off, the stabilization or the structure, the overall structure of the flame is controlled by mostly mixing, but the, the reason it lifts off is that that the mixing time is now shorter than the reaction time or the mixing time becomes comparable to the reaction time. So, the flame cannot stabilize at the rim, so it moves downstream. So, till the point that it starts lifting off, dynamics is mostly controlled by mixing, okay. but if you have to capture lift off, then you need to account for finite uh, reaction rate effects. Okay. So, what we will do is uh, use the ideas that we have discussed so far to classify the regimes, different regimes of turbulent non premix flame. This we just saw that the stretch rate or the mixing rate at uh, Kolmogorov scale is uh, much higher than what it is at the integral length scale. In fact, the ratio is proportional to the square root of Reynolds number. Therefore, the mixing scale that is of relevance is the Kolmogorov scale. And the time scale of the flow that is relevant is the 
mixing time scale which we saw as the inverse of the scalar dissipation rate okay and this also is significantly higher at kolmogorov scales compared to what it is at integral length scales and therefore the flow time determined by the mixing time is proportional is comparable to the kolmogorov scale okay this of course satisfies the condition for uh, what uh, what should be the reynolds number at uh, the kolmogorov scale you can combine the kolmogorov scale uh, reynolds number is eta k uk by the diffusivity i am assuming lewis number and prandtl number are one and it is indeed one okay what happens at the integral scale is overall mixing okay blobs of fuel and oxidizer come together there is no molecular mixing but there is overall coming together of fuel or bulk of fuel and oxidizer and that scale can be simply determined from determined from the uh, mixer fraction gradient okay that is what is shown here so these are the scales that are relevant to uh, the relevant time and length scales for the diffusion flame or the non premix flame okay as far as the flow is concerned the reaction time and length scales uh, are dependent on the reaction rate obviously so if chemistry is fast then the reaction time is low and the damkohler number which is defined as the ratio of the flow time to the reaction time is very very high when the reaction is infinitely fast the damkohler number is infinite the reaction time tends to zero the damkohler number tends to infinite and therefore the flame can be considered to be thin okay this is uh, expressed as the reaction zone thickness okay is much much smaller the, the zone over which the reactions happen is much much smaller than the mixing the overall mixing length scale which is proportional to the uh, which is comparable to the kolmogorov scale what this means is that the smallest scale of turbulence cannot affect the flame structure okay the flame thickness or the thickness over which the reaction happens is smaller than the kolmogorov scale because the reactions are very very fast okay and therefore the internal structure of the flame remember that in reality the flame has a finite thickness even though the approximation that it is thin that means it has a zero thickness is a theoretical construct but in reality it has a certain thickness what we mean by that it is thin is that it is smaller than the kolmogorov scale and therefore the internal structure of the reaction zone is not affected by the kolmogorov scale but it is possible that as we uh, you know we looked at an example where by increasing the strain rate we can quench a flame similarly by increasing the turbulence level we can make the uh, reaction zone length scale comparable to the uh, mixing scale and the kolmogorov scale and therefore under these conditions the turbulence will affect the internal flame structure and what can happen here is actually the the smallest scale can actually shred the flame okay and when that starts happening the reaction zone uh, you don't have a distinct thin flame because it is getting shredded by turbulence we move into what is called a distributed reaction zone or typically what is find in a flameless or a mild combustor corresponds to a region where there is intense turbulence created by the recirculation of the hot products and therefore there is no distinct flame the flame is shredded and distributed so the damkohler number uh, one definition of damkohler number is the uh, time scale the integral time scale uh, the ratio of the integral time scale to the reaction time scale which can be split into two factors the first one which is uh, uh, dependent only on the flow which is the ratio of the uh, integral scale uh, integral time scale to the kolmogorov time scale multiplied by the kolmogorov time scale to the reaction time scale and we already know what the uh, uh, mixing time scale is going to be it is the uh, inverse of the scalar dissipation rate and that is what is expressed here which again if you plug in the relation scaling relations that we uh, derived just now you can show that the overall damkohler number is square root of the reynolds number multiplied by the flame damkohler number using this we can create an approximate regime diagram for the turbulent non premix flames okay remember this criteria and this criteria okay the reaction zone much much smaller than the kolmogorov scale and when the in the case where the reaction zone zone thickness becomes comparable to the uh, kolmogorov scale okay uh, of course it is because there is an intrinsic uh, length scale and velocity scale for a premix flame it is much easier to create a regime diagram for premix flames diffusion flame regime diagrams are hotly debated topic so this is only uh, a simple representation of the diffusion flame uh, regimes okay uh, till the point when reynolds number is 1 we have laminar flames 
this part is laminar flames okay and when the dam color the flame dam color number is uh, greater than the laminar flame uh, dam color number the the zone that is above this line we have thin flame the thin flame approximation the flame reaction zone the the internal structure of the flame is not affected by turbulence so we can assume that a turbulent flame in this regime is an ensemble of laminar flamelets in fact uh, from the video you would have seen that when the flame transitions to becoming turbulent it becomes brushy okay those bristles are nothing but laminar flamelets okay and in this regime the reaction zone thickness becomes comparable to the kolmogorov uh, thickness and then the turbulence the smaller scale of the turbulence starts affecting the reaction zone and when this stretching because of the turbulence becomes intense there can be local extinction and reignition and when you go to this condition and combine it with recirculation of hot gases so that it actually does not go extinct the flame is shredded by the turbulence but the ignition source is constantly provided so it goes through extinction and reignition maintaining a more or less stirred conditions which is called the flameless combustion or mild combustion okay therefore for uh, a lot of applications that uh, you may be working on the thin flame approximation is a good starting point and you may be familiar with the eddy dissipation concept model many of you may be using it the basis for this is the assumption that the flame is very thin and the flame separates the fuel from the oxidizer the reactions are infinitely fast and therefore the average reaction rate remember that to solve for the flow field in a turbulent non premix situation we need a measure or we need a way to calculate the average reaction rate here the average reaction rate is simply controlled by the mixing time scale that is what is shown here the average reaction rate is 1 divided by the time scale for the turbulence uh, this comes from here okay this we have already seen is proportional to the uh, mixing time scale and chemistry has no influence and the mixing time scale itself we saw earlier is proportional to uh, k by epsilon Okay, we saw that the scalar dissipation rate is proportional to epsilon by k. The time scale is the inverse of the uh, scalar dissipation rate, which is k by epsilon. So this simple idea is what is used in uh, the so-called eddy dissipation concept. This minimum of these three quantities is just to make sure that the reaction does not continue to happen when one of the reactants is completely depleted. This is the simplest uh, turbulence combustion model. The next level of description. of course comes uh, from the idea of considering the flame to be an ensemble of laminar flamelets what is done here is you solve the flamelet equation which is uh, shown here for several values of the scalar dissipation rate ranging from small values to a point where the flame goes extinct and it is tabulated and then the reaction the mean reaction rate is calculated from the uh, of course if it is uh, a laminar flame the mean reaction rate is simply equal to uh, minus half rho chi d square yk by dz square so for a given value of chi you can just look up that number but remember that in a turbulent flow field you have fluctuations right so at a given point in space as a function of time the value of the mixture fraction and the scalar dissipation rate will fluctuate okay and therefore to calculate an average reaction rate we need to know the probability density function from which the moment the first moment would be the average reaction rate and that is what is shown here the average reaction rate is the first moment of the right hand side of this equation and uh, for calculating this first moment we need the joint probability density function of the scalar dissipation rate and the mixture fraction conditional on uh, z being equal to zst okay but in the simple case where the reactions are infinitely fast the solution is the same irrespective of what value of chi uh, is there in the local flow field and therefore d square y by dc square becomes a dirac delta function what i mean by this is uh, we saw this in, in the case of infinitely fast reactions yf varies linearly in the fuel side okay i am making that line thick okay and it goes to zero at the flame and it remains zero on 
the oxidizer side. Okay. So, if you have to write an equation that describes this uh, profile, Okay, this profile. This is y f. This is uh, zero. Okay, so uh, z greater than or equal to z s t. Y f is a linear function of z. Okay, and for z less than z s t, y f is equal to zero. So, this is how y f changes what we are looking for is d square y f by d z square because that is a term that appears in the reaction rate equation. Okay. So, d, d y f by d z is some number here a constant value here okay. this is d y f by d z okay. and then it is 0 here okay. and d square y, y f by d z square will be Dirac delta function centered at z s t. It is 0 on both the sides, but it is the reaction rate is not 0 at the flame. The reaction rate is a finite value which is given by the integral of the uh, Dirac delta function around that point. Okay. In fact, we can show that it is simply the uh, rate of mixing of the reactants or the rate of diffusion of the reactants towards the uh, reaction zone or the flame. Okay. So, the second derivative of y f will be a Dirac delta function that is what is shown here the d square y f by d z square is a Dirac delta function at centered at z equals z s t. You can plug this into the expression for omega dot f remember that when the reaction rates are infinitely high uh, for every chi you have the same solution and the flame locates itself at z equal to z s t. So, the probability density function you are looking for is only p of z, uh, condition on z equals z s t and you can show that the reaction rate is proportional to the scalar dissipation rate as expected from the basic theory okay. and the approximation that is made is that the conditional value of chi at z equals z s t is taken to be the mean value of uh, the scalar dissipation rate at z equals z s t that means you are taking only the first order term. Okay. So, this is an approximation that is made. So, the conditional mean of uh, the density times the scalar dissipation rate for the location where the stoichiometry is met and uh, the probability that z equals z s t uh, is assumed to be just the mean value. Okay. So, this is an approximation that is made. Okay. So, this is what is used in a flamelet description where the flamelet is taken to be controlled only by mixing okay. no reaction rate effects. Okay. Of course, the next level of description is where you want to actually account for some chemistry effect for example, lift off. Okay. So, at lift off you have a combustible mixture between the flame and the rim it has a, a value of z which in the case of infinitely fast chemistry must have a flame but in reality it does not have a flame because the scalar dissipation rates are so high that the flame cannot stabilize there. Okay. So, that is a finite chemistry there is an effect because of the finite rate of chemistry and to capture that you need to uh, account for extinction and reignition in the code and some finite rate chemistry effects can be included by using the detailed flamelet library. I will not go into too much of the details of this the average reaction rate is again calculated by the same strategy, but now the difference in the value of scalar dissipation rate at different locations must be accounted for. Uh, uh, you need both see uh, so for uh, the probability density function of z uh, we do not know. Okay. So, what we do is we calculate the mean value for uh, z and the variance by a closure equation and assume a probability density function that depends only on the mean and the variance. Okay. Usually a beta function is what is used. Okay. Uh, you, can, uh, you can find more details in uh, for instance book by Poinso called theoretical and numerical combustion. I do not want to go into too much of details I just want to uh, just summarize quickly the hierarchy of approach. First you assume that there is no flamelet structure whatever is mixed is reacted that is the eddy dissipation concept model 
and the next level of description is you have a flamelet but the flamelet is always there independent of whatever is the value of the scalar dissipation rate that is the second level of description. The third level of description is where you account for the fact that the structure of the flame is different at different scalar dissipation rates and therefore from the tabulated values of the uh, flamelet equation at different values of chi you calculate the local flame features. Accounting for extinction and reignition requires another level of description starting from here ok and I will not go into the details of that but you can refer uh, theoretical and numerical combustion by points on ok. This I have already explained yeah uh, this is again a summary of uh, the flamelet model. So, the turbulent flame brush is, is an ensemble of laminar flamelets. The structure of laminar flamelet is determined and tabulated by solving the flamelet equation for different values of chi. But remember that in a turbulent flow field the at a given location in space the value of chi z z uh, the uh, higher moments of z everything will uh, uh, I am sorry the value of z will fluctuate and therefore you need to characterize the probability density function of z with uh, its moments mean variance etc. And from the mean and variance of z and mean value of the scalar dissipation rate local profiles are looked up from the pre-tabulated database. There are several approaches and ways of doing this ok. I will just show uh, some simple cases which we have already seen simple solutions of the flame rate equation. One case is where there is no reaction there is only mixing the reaction rate is 0 and therefore you have uh, a solution which is pure mixing all the fuel and oxidizer are mixing and the y and the t's are linear functions of z as expected from the definition of the scalar. This is the this is also uh, this is the case with infinitely fast chemistry where uh, the reaction rate is a delta function centered at z equals zst is equal to the uh, equal to this term. You can now uh, for uh, ok. So, the react for every value of chi the reaction rate is infinitely fast ok. Therefore, uh, it is not uh, the left hand side is 0 everywhere else not because chi is 0 because the reaction rate is 0. So, you can integrate this equation you will get linear profiles on either side only that the slopes will have a discontinuity because the left hand side is a Dirac delta term ok. Note the discontinuity in the slope at z equals z st ok. And this discontinuity exists because the reaction rate is finite no fuel can cross over to the oxidizer side and no oxidizer can cross over to the fuel side. So, y f must be 0 here and y arcs must be 0 here ok. And corrections to the solution can be calculated by assuming that around the flame the products go to equilibrium and that is a solution I uh, showed earlier from the paper by Bilger where the profiles were actually not discontinuous at z equals zst they were continuous the slopes were also continuous at z equals zst because it has been assumed that around the flame <coughs> the composition is the equilibrium composition. Uh, this works very well for the stoichiometry and the lean side and a little bit on the rich side, but if you go further into the rich side the equilibrium assumption does not work because the reactions are not that slow I am sorry the reactions are not that fast it is a bit slow. Well, this is the uh, profile that is infinitely fast chemistry, but corrected with equilibrium assumption. So, the discontinuity in the slope is removed. This we saw earlier in a real example that uh, it is quite close to reality if we are far away from the extinction point ok ok that uh, completes the uh, turbulent diffusion flame modeling related aspects you have any questions questions no ok let us I will keep the premix flame part short because uh, most of you are keen on uh, or using diffusion flame or non premixed uh, configurations but just for the sake of completeness I will quickly go over the premix flames in fact creating regime, regime diagrams for premix flames is much easier than for uh, uh, for non premix flames because there are definite length and time scales. So, the dam kohler number here everything that we have discussed about turbulence still holds here and the dam kohler number corresponding to the uh, integral scale will be this uh, the integral length scale divided by the integral velocity scale and the uh, reaction time scale is the delta divided by SL0 ok. Again we use this uh, earlier also. There is a new non dimensional number called the Karlovitz number which is uh, the inverse of the dam Kohler number where the flow time scale is taken as the Kolmogorov time scale ok. 
the dam collar number is tau t over tau c the karlovitz number is the chemical time scale divided by the time scale of the kolmogorov uh, kolmogorov scale okay so the chemical time scale still remains the same delta over sl0 the kolmogorov time scale is eta k over u dash k always time scale is a length scale divided by a velocity scale okay. similarly for uh, the chemistry also now if you can rearrange it and use the equations that we uh, derived earlier you can show that it is square root epsilon by nu over sl0 by delta and the turbulent reynolds number you can show is dam collar number squared and uh, karlovitz number squared the the idea of using dam collar number and karlovitz number to create a flame regime for premix flames is uh, simple when the Karlo when the karlovitz number is much less than 1 remember that karlovitz number is the chemical time scale divided by the kolmogorov time scale and this is much less than 1 obviously the dam collar number is much uh, is greater than 1 because the time scales for the integral scale are much smaller this means that this means what this means that the flames not infinitely fast chemistry we are looking at premix flames so the chemistry is still finite rate yeah the reaction uh, the reactivity is still uh, sl0 is still a measure of the reactivity the reactions are happening at a finite rate but the thickness of the flame is much much smaller than the kolmogorov thickness okay so this is the thin flame limit of the premix flames here also what you can here also the this assumption or this regime offers the following simplifications you cannot you need not solve for the structure of the flame because a laminar flame including a strained laminar flame you can pre calculate the structure of the flame using a approach that is similar to the opposed jet flame for a non premix flame and from that all you need to do is depending on the conditions inside the flow which which can be calculated independent of the chemistry you, ha you have to embed the flame and let the flame transport transport at the laminar flame speed okay so this is the thin flame limit of the laminar premix uh, of the uh, turbulent premix flame the next uh, situation is when the uh, flame thickness is uh, becomes comparable to the kolmogorov scale or uh, the flame thickness is actually bigger or larger than the kolmogorov scale now the smallest length scales can actually affect the flame what it does is to thicken the flame so this is a thickened flame regime and when the dam collar number when you further increase the turbulence levels the dam collar number becomes much less than 1 and this is the condition of the well stirred reactor okay under these conditions it doesn't actually if you have a combustion system working in this regime it doesn't really matter whether it is premixed or non premixed the behavior inside the combustion chamber is essentially the same okay yeah i'll uh any questions yeah. yeah so the i'll just quickly explain uh one simple version of the flame flamelet model for the premix flame called the bray mosleby model well there are generally two approaches this belongs to the uh okay this is the thin flame approximation is valid since the flame is thin the flow uh, zone essentially has only can be in either of the uh, two states one is the unburnt state separated from a flame that is at the burnt this is a burnt mixture okay you don't have to resolve the flame because the flame is thin compared to the other lens scales okay so the flame separates the unburnt mixture from the burnt mixture so similar to a 
well similar to mixture fraction this is not a conserved scalar but still this is a measure uh, for example you can define theta as t minus tu by tb minus tu so in the unburnt mixture the theta value is 0 on the burnt side the theta value is 1 okay and starting from the energy equation you can construct uh, a conservation equation for uh, theta but a more convenient variable is theta times theta minus 1 because it is directly related, related to the reaction rate. I will not go into the details of this but uh, the reaction rate can be shown to be related to the scalar dissipation of theta which will look like this and this will come out of a conservation equation for theta times theta minus 1. All this details uh, are uh, are there in the book by Poinso, but what I want to uh, emphasize is that either you can calculate the reaction rate from an approach like this or the other approach is to simply take the propagation to be controlled propagation to be controlled by the turbulent motion. Okay. So, this follows from a simple idea that the turbulent flame speed is okay. well there are other correlations which account for the length scale effects, but this is something that we discussed earlier that the turbulent flame speed can be related to in this case I have written u dash, but there are other correlation which accounts for both intensity as well as the length scale. Okay. So, from the local uh, turbulence state, uh, state of the turbulence, we can calculate a turbulent flame speed from the correlations. Okay. And the flame moves this entire block of wrinkled flame moves into the unburnt mixture with a velocity of st. Okay. This is uh, a simple model for uh, simulating premixed flame situations. Another approach is based on the flame surface area density. Which is equivalent to the Bremer's Libby model. This is based on the idea that locally the flame retains the laminar flame structure, but it is wrinkled by turbulence. Therefore, the turbulent flame speed is simply the ratio of the turbulent flame, area of the turbulent flame to the area of the laminar flame. Okay. So, this is the 1D projected area, this is the total area of the uh, corrugated or the wrinkled flame. Okay. So, conservation equations or transport equations are written for what is called the flame surface area density which is the area of the flame per unit volume okay. and, and, and the equation for the equation for sigma will have terms that can produce flame surface area the production terms. This is mainly because of the turbulent stretch minus the extinction because of again because of turbulence stretch other effects. Okay. So, this is a transport equation for the flame surface area density which has production and extinction terms and from the flame surface area density average reaction rates are calculated assuming that within the flame structure reaction still proceeds at laminar flame speeds okay. times volume will be the average reaction rate. this can be plugged into the species conservation equation and we can solve for the flow field. Okay. Okay. 
I think that is about all that I have, is there anything I should add? That is about all that I have to say about turbulence modeling. Of course, this is just a, uh, an overall picture for your reference, I will just write down uh, the name of the book that has more details. This has lot more details and uh, in fact lot of interesting data on DNS and LES on uh, specific configurations that have been performed. Okay. Thank you.